hey, I just finished listening to all the episodes and realized you guys have, you guys haven't released one in a while. Like, when's the next one coming out? So that's one of the reasons why I'm really excited to be firing up the On Fire podcast again because I know that my podcast game is so weak. <laughs> but at the same time, it's so cool because there's literally people that only know me from the On Fire podcast. Yeah. You guys are the reason, in a big way. You guys are the reason why this is happening because we know that there's a large audience out there that does want to keep hearing, you know, the guests and and the types of interviews that we're having. So really appreciate you guys' support and uh, giving us that nudge along the way. What is up, YouTube? Matt McKeever here. Did you guys know I've got a podcast? Did you know I have a podcast I neglect most of the time? Well, it's called the On Fire Podcast. It's been over a year and a half since uh, I released an episode on it, but we're back. I'm excited to be back, and we're going to be catching up with my co-host, Kellen, on today's video. Myself and Kellen, we're just going to kind of share some of our excuses for not making an episode of our podcast for the last year and a half. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you're interested in checking out the On Fire podcast, we'll throw a link in the video description down below, and let's just jump into it. Welcome to the On Fire podcast with your hosts, Matt and Kellen. So today, we don't have any guests. Um, this is kind of just our apology episode. I think it's our second one ever. Um, it's been about a year and a half or something ridiculous since our last episode. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy that it flew by that fast. But one, I just thought it would be great for us to kind of catch you guys up on what we've been up to. Just so you know, we haven't literally just been dead or doing nothing. But we obviously haven't been doing a lot with the On Fire podcast, but we're really hoping to remedy that you know with 2021 on the horizon i think we're going to fire back up the podcast so yeah i just thought it'd be fun to kind of catch up i think you know the last episode we left off on we were looking at the timeline and it was right before you were kind of leaving on the van trip yeah so so basically first off to kind of give some context this is a very grassroots podcast right so like we sit down on a couch a lot of times we're sitting down like we've had guests from like you know like meet kevin and graham stefan coming to london sitting on a couch beside us and just mm -hmm. recording these episodes you know for a while i was editing them we kind of we kind of we finally got like an editor to help with this kind of stuff so hopefully we'll be able to really release episodes more consistently at this point I think we got a good yes. plan but yeah so right around the time of our last episode we had Chandler David Smith on as a guest and um, I had just left on a van trip so my girlfriend and I and our dog uh, we all packed up and we did like the millennial thing where we converted a sprinter van and traveled around the USA we left for three months right after I went to quit my day job I actually ended up getting laid off from my day job so it actually worked out pretty well um, and uh, Angie, same thing. She ended up getting laid off as well. So we left three months, traveled around the USA. We did like 30,000 kilometers in the van. We saw like 20 national parks and like, I forget how many, 30 states or something crazy. And yeah, it was just an amazing adventure. And then uh, kind of got back from that. And uh, in 2020, I acquired 20 units. Uh, so a few sixplexes and a duplex. And uh, that's kind of what I've been up to. It's been keeping me fairly busy. Um, and uh, yeah, hoping going forward to, you know, be now kind of the focus is coaching people as well as buying an apartment building. Those are like my two main goals right now. Nice. And so we're coming up. I think this is just perfect timing because we're shooting this in December 2020. I don't know when this episode is coming out, but probably at the start of 2021 yeah. is probably a safe bet. So let's just talk a little bit about what does 2021 look like for you, Kellen? Yeah, so, and like, since the beginning, I don't know, I've probably said this in episodes from the first episode, I've always struggled with what my goals are, especially if I'm looking long term, but usually I'm pretty good for my next year or so. And I know that right now, um, you know, my girlfriend is still working towards her financial independence. She's actually at seven buildings now, which is pretty sweet, building a portfolio of her own mm -hmm. on the side. So, you know, we're kind of looking at it like, all right, she's still got a little, she's got to get a few more buildings before she can leave her day job. At that point, we're probably going to go on another adventure. Um, but at this point, I have some time to be able to focus on my business. So um, really, my goal is to try and laser focus on what my new acquisitions are going to look like. My I'm in the process of closing on that last sixplex right now, a couple of big refinances. I really want to be able to buy an apartment building solo. So with no joint venture partners, no equity partners, nothing like that. Um, and hopefully not needing to borrow too much money either. So that's kind of my goal right now, buying an apartment building solo. Um, of course, the challenge is when you know, a good deal comes up, it's really hard for me to say no to it. So I'm gonna have a hard time uh, passing those along. But um, yeah, in the, in the meantime, I might wholesale them or uh, wholetail them or maybe approach a flip or something to keep me busy until that, that good deal comes along. Yeah, and all the properties you've been buying are clustered, right? It's kind of in one or two neighborhoods. Yeah. Are you gonna stay to that with the apartment building? Because that's really 
going to like reduce your pool of available properties? Yeah, I think that I'll finally need to venture outside of those, although yeah. it'd be awesome if I could. I, so I invest mostly in Old East Village in Soho in London, Ontario. And hey man, if I can find an apartment building in Soho, that'd be awesome. Um, but more than likely, if I'm lucky, I'll be in something in London. Although I'm also realistic about the fact that it may need to be open up to opening up to, you know, uh, St. Thomas, maybe venturing to Chatham if I if I find that kind of thing interesting. But I'd really like to start by focusing in London. Um, it'd be amazing if I could be anywhere near the downtown core. But like th like the prices are absurd and the demand for apartment buildings is crazy. It's a whole different world. Um, like getting connected with those types of people. Luckily, I have some legitimacy. So like my fear was always. Well, like, how do you convince someone that you're capable of buying an apartment building? Well, now I can just say, look, I have 52 units solely owned right now. They're like, oh, cool, you are a legitimate investor. It actually, that isn't as much of a challenge as I expected. So, um, yeah, I mean, the goal right now is getting connected with as many people as I can and, uh, and, and really starting that search hopefully for now in London, Ontario. And just to kind of maybe loop this all back into fire at this point along your fire journey, why, like, how do you decide what the next financial goal is going to be? Like, what does an apartment building actually mean, or does it move the needle? Yeah. So for me, it's uh, like originally the goal was cash flow, leave the day job, and then it was, hey, I want to keep building cash flow. Now the cash flow is way, way more than I'd ever need, uh, and so therefore, there's no point in me really focusing on that anymore. Um, I live a pretty frugal lifestyle. I drive a Hyundai Accent. Uh, I live in one unit of my triplex. You know, uh, not not an expensive life. So. Cash flow is not really my goal. Um, although the building has to cash flow in order for the building to make sense to future investors and for resale value. But my goal is going to be apartment buildings mainly because I think that I should focus on equity at this point and net worth gain. Um, so you know, in Ontario at least, uh, you know, generally the way to do that is getting an apartment building, getting some turnover, getting the rents back up to market value. And honestly, it doesn't even necessarily mean large renovations. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of these buildings have have potential built right into them. It's just about getting that turnover. So um, when you turn that kind of thing over, you get the net worth or you get the net operating income up and a direct correlation to the value of the property. So um, somewhat predictable. Um, luckily, these days I'm able to hire my own appraiser, which helps. I'm able to kind of get some, you know, good advice as to what I think the property might be worth after I do certain repairs or turnover or whatever. So, um, kind of an exciting thing. Uh, a little bit out of my comfort zone, which is good. Um, so I'm kind of pushing myself, but I have a really good foundation to fall back on. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty happy about it all. Nice man. So like you've been you've been like doing a video a day for like yeah, the last year. We've been doing a video a day on YouTube. So it's not like I haven't been creating social media content. I just haven't been doing it on podcast. But I think that actually is going to be a big goal in 2021 is make sure I conquer written and podcast uh, content forms. I think I've been very lax in that area. So I really want to focus on making sure that the presence I've got on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook also exists on, you know, LinkedIn. LinkedIn podcasts and um, just like written like ebooks and book books as well. So, hey YouTube, have you been thinking about becoming a wholesaler but not sure how to get started? Maybe you've got no money. Maybe you're just a little scared to get out of the gate. Well, I had Amar from my wholesale team. He started and did his first deal in his first 68 days, made $25,000 as his first gross wholesale fee, write an ebook. So in this 20 page ebook, Amar breaks down for you step by step how he went and knocked over 2,100 doors to make $25,000. Completely free ebook, just wanna pay it forward to you guys. If you're interested in grabbing it, we'll throw a link in the video description down below. Grab your copy of Amar's ebook today. Are you willing to share like what kind of thought process you have toward books and ebooks and that and, like topics or that kind of thing or everything? So like I'm I'm four years deep now into creating content and I feel like this year I've really seen it hit a tipping point where a lot of the businesses that I've been dabbling with or a lot of the businesses I've been playing with have really grown into full fledged businesses now. So like at the start of 2020, um, or maybe taking a step back, like probably when we last did this this episode like when the episode with Chandler came out I think that was end of 2019 at that point in time like I probably had like a dozen employees maybe like upwards of 15 between the different businesses now it's about 40 at this point in time and I imagine 
like if things go right in 2021, we'll see what sort of curveballs come. But I imagine we'll end up closer to 100 employees at the end of 2021. So really 2020 and the end of 2019 has been all about business building. So yeah. really just like taking a lot of the things I've been dabbling with and deciding to be serious about them. Wow. So like, you know, a bunch of different businesses. What are like the top one, two or three and like ones yeah. that are really taking up most of your time at so this point? Right now, the like I kind of view it as three main businesses. So I've got my education company, Cashflow Tribe, which has grown really fast, Canada's largest and fastest growing real estate community. Um, then we've got the uh, apartment buying business. So in the last, uh, again, literally since the last episode came out, we've bought 89 units and we've got another 22 that we're firm on. So awesome. um, the goal in that business is acquire about 100 to 200 units a year with JV partners. So pretty much doing the exact opposite is <laughs> well, what you're doing with apartments. Idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, then the other business is the wholesaling business. So that business really popped off. Uh, COVID was really hard at the start, like March and April were really shitty months. But once we got through that and found our sea legs and figured out how to virtually wholesale, it really started clicking again. So um, yeah, really loving those businesses. And like, so what was kind of the thought process that you went through from March until now? So like March was like, I know you released a video like wartime CEO yeah. type stuff. What kind of happened in your mentality throughout that, throughout that time? Yeah, well like it, March was a weird time as an entrepreneur, right? Like we were literally in February, we were just planning to do a big hiring spree. I just hired a couple new employees. Um, you know, particularly I can think of like Janelle from the team. She had just left like, CTV to join us, which like from just like internally, it was frustrating for me as a, as an owner or CEO of a business to be like, she left like a real job to come work for like a fake job, mm -hmm. like my company. And I just like <laughs> literally like the first two weeks into her, um, into her, uh, like employment here, I'm giving a talk to the team that was a speech that I essentially cribbed from Ben Horowitz who wrote the hard thing about hard things where he explores wartime CEOs. I was like, we're going into war now. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm asking everyone to take one week of no pay so that I can just go and spend a week thinking because I literally don't know if this is the end of the world as we've known it or not <laughs> because like, so like I can remember literally where I was when I realized that COVID was a big deal. Uh, uh, Sean Allen's meetup group had just Henry, finished yeah. Onria and we were um, sitting in the bar at the hotel and like it just came across the TV screen NBA suspends whatever I was like holy shit the NBA is like one of the biggest for-profit businesses in the US like if they're suspending games like this is serious I was like this all of a sudden there's gonna be a race to safety so like everyone's going to try and close everything everyone's going to want to be on the right side of history here if this is like the pandemic that ends life as we know it and yeah it was a rocky road for the first few months and stressful hey YouTube did you know that I've got an education company I'm gonna guess you didn't because a lot of you guys DM me asking if I do. So it's called Cashflow Tribe. You can go to www.cashflowtribe.com. Check it out. You can sign up for a completely free membership. There's also is a premium membership that has all kinds of great features you can unlock, but just go check out the free membership. You've got a calculator you can use online completely free. You've got Canada's most robust online forums for real estate investors, and you've got some great resources and some free, completely free courses that you can get and all you need to do is sign up for your free membership. It's an amazing network of Canadian real estate investors and I hope you guys go grab your free membership today. Well, and like you, you're big into history, right? So like yeah. you read a ton of history and like I've read a little bit of the hardcore history stuff as well and, and or listened to the podcast. And like one of the, one of the topics was, I remember one time he was like, you know, Everyone thinks that life as we know it isn't going to change. It's yeah. going to keep going the way it is forever. You know, right now we're in a boom, booming, like, you know, real estate uh, world and like things are going to keep going this way, right? Things will keep appreciating. Like people just can't imagine a world where that doesn't happen. So when something like this happens and you've read history and you know, like things can, things can do a complete 180. Life yeah. can change entirely. You kind of like things just go whoosh. All of a sudden you go like, whoa, like. Am I yeah. gonna be the one who comes out of this, you know, because I came, I went in prepared or not? Yeah, it's crazy the amount of like recency and normalcy bias we have, right? And just how blinded we can be to 
just assuming that things are going to always stay static. Um, I think there is a lot of huge opportunities here and so that definitely leads into 2021 where I think we're about to make a big bet on content. So I'm really excited. We're going to be renting out or buying some sort of large commercial or like industrial warehouse space, like two, 4,000 square feet, set up like a proper YouTube studio and like, I'm, I'm going to invest like six figures into a YouTube studio. We're going to go hard on it. And I'm just, I'm so happy with what's happened so far over the last four years with content that I can't wait to see what happens another four years from now. So in part two, that's one of the reasons why I'm really excited to be firing up the On Fire podcast again, because I know that my podcast game is so weak, <laughs> but at the same time, it's so cool because there's literally people that only know me from the On Fire podcast, yeah. which like blows my mind because one, it has, it's been over a year since we did an episode. And two, it was never something that was either of our primary focuses. Yeah, you know, exactly. And like we really appreciate people who've stuck around during this time and who are jumping back on because you know over this time I've been getting messages on our on fire podcast group and just direct messages all the time like hey I just finished listening to all the episodes and realized you guys have you guys haven't released one in a while like when's the next one coming out so you guys are the reason in a big way you guys are the reason why this is happening because we know that there's a large audience out there that does want to keep hearing you know the guests and and the types of interviews that we're having so really appreciate you guys support and uh, giving us that nudge along the way <laughs> yeah so that's pretty much it i think for updates yeah. from us i just thought it'd be really important for us to at least kind of let you know what's been going on in our lives as always we would love a five star rating and written <laughs> review it literally doesn't matter what you put in that written review but it does matter that you leave us a written review and really thank helps. you thank you guys so much for those that have we have a, a, yeah. i think we have 90 or something good like solid written reviews so mm -hmm. i really appreciate yeah, that yeah and it's amazing seeing all the like the really thoughtful comments actually i I was just looking at some of the recent reviews before we jumped on here today. So really appreciate that, guys. And we're looking forward to coming out on a more regular basis in 2021. Thanks, guys. Thanks to Callum for taking the time to shoot this video. And thanks to you guys, the audience, for listening to the On Fire podcast. For a podcast that I neglect as much as I do, it's amazing that we've got as many written reviews as we do, as many five-star ratings as well. So thank you, guys. Really appreciate your support. And we're going to be coming back in 2021 with at least a couple episodes a month. So let's just do this 2021.